When you farm for a living, you wear lots of hats. Engineer, mechanic, carpenter, welder, accountant, meteorologist, biologist. When there's a job to be done, you do it. When you need a new tool, you make it. And when stuff breaks, you fix it. Keeping your equipment in good shape, that's critical to your success. So is safety for you and your team. We know safety takes time and money. Maybe you've been dealt a pretty good hand so far and nobody's gotten seriously hurt. Why change? Murphy's Law says if something can go wrong, sooner or later, it will. It's like gambling. The longer you sit at the table, the more likely you're gonna lose your shirt. <laughs> In these short videos, we'll look at some common problem areas around the farm shop and talk about what you can do to lower your risk and put the odds back in your favor. Some gaps are kind of cute. Others are just plain scary. The gap on a bench grinder you may not give it much thought, but if there's too much space between the wheel and the work rest, the odds are good that something, a piece of metal, maybe your thumb, is gonna get sucked in. Ah! Set the gap to no more than an eighth of an inch. You'll need to readjust it occasionally as the wheel wears down. The upper guard is there to knock down any flying debris. It should be set at no more than a quarter inch. If you're using a wire brush, there's even more risk of being pulled in. It might be better to remove the work rest entirely. Remember, nothing's 100%. Always wear hearing and eye protection. It's your best bet for staying safe. The workbench otherwise known as the place where hand grinder guards go to die. They get in the way, you take them off. Forget to put them back on. Next thing you know, somebody's heading to the hospital with an eye out, or worse. The guard is there to protect you if the wheel breaks up. If you occasionally need to remove it to get the job done, Always wear extra protective gear. And remember to put it back on for the next person. One more thing, hand grinders throw a lot of sparks, so keep your work area clear of flammables. Farming's dirty business. Using compressed air to clean your clothes, bad idea. Believe it or not, compressed air can get under your skin and form a bubble that can travel to your brain and kill you. Recently blown clothing is also highly flammable. When you're working with compressed air, be sure to use an OSHA approved nozzle with a built-in pressure reliever. Never use a nozzle with the safety end removed. If you rig up a nozzle, get a safety end and add it yourself. One more thing, when you use compressed air, a lot of stuff is going to get blown around. So wear your eye protection. Everybody knows when you're working outdoors, it's important to protect yourself from the sun. Did you know you can get a kind of sunburn to your eyes from an arc welder? Flash burns are really painful. And like a sunburn, you may not notice until hours later. Even brief exposures can be dangerous, so always wear face and eye protection. Use a flash screen if somebody's working close by. Welding fumes can be extremely toxic, especially if you're working on galvanized metal or stainless steel. So use a welding respirator 
and make sure the area is well ventilated. Okay, so we've been having some fun so far. But a serious injury? That's no laughing matter. Some of the worst shop injuries happen when a machine gets turned on accidentally. Or there's an unexpected release of stored energy. This accident? Yeah, it looks pretty bad. The worker could end up losing a few fingers or even his hand. But it might have been worse. He could have lost his life. If you're working on vehicles or machinery, pocket the keys so no one else can start the engine. Disconnect the battery if necessary. Release the pressure from steam, air, and hydraulic lines. Never count on common sense or past experience to prevent injuries. Having a lockout, tagout policy in place and always sticking to it is the only way to make sure nobody gets hurt. Sure, Superman can lift a car with his bare hands. The rest of us might need a jack. If you're working under heavy equipment, don't rely on the jack alone. Use blocks or a safety stand so the work can't shift or fall. Blocks should be crib stacked for stability, not just piled on top of each other. Using a hoist or crane to lift heavy objects can save your back. Just be sure to follow safety procedures, including weight limits. I'm so pleased you could join me. Thank you. Thank you. Unless you're hosting tea parties, housekeeping may not be high on your priority list. Anyway, what's wrong with a little oil and dust? Oh dear! Besides being dangerous, a messy shop sends a message about the value you place on safety. Setting a higher standard and holding everyone accountable can have a positive impact on your entire operation. Don't worry, you don't need to do a white glove test. Just follow some basic housekeeping principles. To prevent slips, trips, and falls, make sure walkways are clear and well lighted. Clean up spills as soon as they happen. Keep flammables in the proper labeled containers with the lid closed. Eliminate fuel sources such as dirty rags and paper. When washing parts, use the safest solvent for the job. Washing stations should have hinged lids that close automatically in a fire. Chemicals should be properly labeled and stored, and employees should be trained to follow the instructions on the label. As a farmer, you take pride in getting things done. But getting things done safe so nobody gets hurt? At the end of the day, that's what really counts. Remember Murphy's Law, if something can go wrong, sooner or later, it will. Thinking bad things won't happen to you just because they haven't happened yet, that's a sucker bet. Don't gamble on safety for you or your team. There's lots you can do to lower your risk of workplace injuries. To learn more, visit safe.com slash safety and health.